Yeah, right, folks. This thought that I'd do a uh, die casting with this uh, tent pole die using lead. I'm not set up for aluminium at the moment, but I think it's since I've got so much lead lying around, I can give that a try. I made a makeshift bung for my stainless steel tube. Uh, I'm going to preheat the die and drive off any moisture. I don't want to heat it up too much though. That's pretty warm as it is. Made a new cork pin. Obviously it's clamped tight. Obviously not as tight as a proper die casting machine, but it does the job for lead anyway. Yeah, it's getting nice and warm. Now I polished this die up on the inside and removed any paint that I put on it before. Paint's just to stop the rust on the outside when I store it. Generally um, you can die cast lead with a cold die but since this one's been in storage for a while and it's a bit damp out here I think I'd drive off any moisture and just make it a little bit warm. It also helps to give you a better quality casting as well. Only problem is if it's too hot the lead will tend to flash and just run out through the, any tiny gaps it can get to. Uh, it's actually quite hot at the moment, so this first shot's going to be a bit, have a bit of flash on it. It's worth a try anyway. Core pin's inserted firmly. I'm going to get the melt underway. The die's plenty hot, so it'll still be very hot by the time I'm done melting. And we'll give it a shot. I'm just using scrap lead for this. Old wheel weights and other things. Nothing special. As always, use die casting gloves. Proper, proper protection, eye protection. Uh, last thing you want is a bit of moisture inside the die going pop and spurting the metal back out at you. That's why I preheated it, but for those at home, if you can't preheat it, just be very careful. Just some of my aluminium stuff, CA603 and 601, magnesium. I had uh, 401 somewhere, I don't know where that's gone. Half melted crap. All good stuff though. Obviously don't do what I'm doing and handle it with your bare hands. You know, lead can be a bit nasty. Get the melt ready now. I don't have a thermocouple so I can't tell just what temperature I'm pouring at, but it's good. Yeah, definitely need more milk. That's shot number one, not enough material. That's the first shot right there. Definitely way short of material, but it's definitely going to work. I can see some flow lines in it. Must pour faster this time, next time. Getting ready for shot number two. 
melt so much done. Quite fit. Quantity of roughly doubled. I'm going to be pouring faster this time. The dye also has more heat in it from the last shot. Let's go. Much better. Take it a bit. That should be a good shot. Went a bit overboard there. Hopefully it hasn't plugged that bolt hole too much. It's not like aluminum where it really sucks down and feeds off it. This will set pretty quick. I shouldn't say set, cool. <laughs> Solidify. I'll have to get my foundry gear in order and try this in al aluminium. The only difference is this died after we preheated about 350 degrees Celsius before I could pour a shot. I need a big blowtorch for it. Let's crack this sucker open and see what it's like. Pull the material out of the bolt hole, so let's see how she looks. That is it. That is a duplicate of the aluminum casting. A bit of flash down there that would linish off. Obviously this is the wrong material that I'm using, stainless and lead instead of aluminium. But that would be uh, TIG welded into place. Well, obviously after the run is cut off on a bandsaw, then TIG welded all the way around and should be finished. These little gears just bolt together one to the other and you've got your tent poles. I'd call that a successful casting. bung can be knocked out again. I'm going to make a duplicate of this. Let's try another shot.
number three. Still have low lines and that ridge is more prominent now. It's in the right position. 